Malta is the smallest national capital in the European Union. It has been inhabited for almost 8,000 years. Menaidra is one of the most atmospheric of all the temples on Malta, with its location on the southern cliffs overlooking the small isle of Filfla. It's among the world's most ancient religious sites and it has an astronomically aligned temple, positioned in such a way that light illuminates the inside in special ways on the solstices and equinoxes. My name is Kaylee and today we will look at Menaidra Megalithic Temple Complex on the southern cliffs of the island of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea. Malta is an archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea, about 80 kilometers south of Italy. It consists of three islands, Malta, Gozo and Camino, with a total population of about 500,000 inhabitants. There is a small uninhabited island south of Malta. It's known as Filfla but there have been territorial disputes with Libya. In the early 1980s, the Maltese government appealed to the International Court of Arbitration in The Hague. They wanted to include Filfla in their calculations of the median line between the Maltese and Libyan waters. This was appealed as a result of a dispute between the two countries for oil exploration purposes. Malta was first inhabited by Neolithic farmers in 5900 BCE on the island of Gozo. Their agricultural methods depleted the soil of its nutrition until the islands became uninhabitable. Around 3850 BCE, the islands were repopulated by a civilization originating from Sicily that eventually built the megalithic temples which today are among the oldest surviving buildings in the entire world. Their civilization collapsed around 2350 BCE, leaving the islands uninhabited until the Bronze Age when warriors repopulated the islands again. Malta's prehistory ended around 700 BCE when the Phoenicians colonized the islands. They ruled over the islands until they fell to the Romans in 218 BCE. The temple period in Malta has two distinct phases. The first phase is the Gigantia period, which lasted from 3600 BCE until 3000 BCE. The second phase is named the Tarkshan period, which started around 3000 BCE and ended around 2500 BCE. The temples on Malta typically have a distinctive and complex trefoil design. In architecture and archaeology, trefoils describe a layout or floor plan consisting of three apses in a cloverleaf shape. An apse in architecture is a semicircular recess. Megalithic monuments tell many stories. The one that intrigues us most are the ones that tell us about their beginnings, their construction, their use and development in prehistory. However, they provide evidence for a different story as well, which starts when they were discovered in modern times. The monuments are not just studied and analyzed by scholars trying to identify their origins, but they are restored and reconstructed as well thus undergoing physical changes that aren't always immediately evident. Numerous restorations and conservation interventions have taken place at Menaidra and its neighboring temple complex named Hagarkin. Records of only a few of these interventions have been kept and in some cases even this documentation is missing from the archives. This makes it difficult to attribute a date to these interventions to identify the methods and materials that were used. The Menaidra Temple Complex is located on the southern cliffs of the island of Malta, near the town of Rendi. It's situated in the Hagarkin and Menaidra Archaeological Park. To enter the park you must buy a ticket. This ticket covers a visit to both Menaidra and the Temple of Hagarkin, which is only 500 meters to the east and closer to the visitor center. Both temples were constructed around the same time, but there's no clear indication that they are connected in any way. I should start with emphasizing that the construction chronology of the Menaidra temple is mostly based on typological observations and not based on trench excavations. Without trench excavations, the dating of the temples and their chronology will stay unclear. Shards from the earlier Zebuch and Mjar period were found in the South Temple. 
The shards date from between 4000 BCE and 3600 BCE, which could be evidence of an even earlier construction date than what is now accepted. This could also be an indication that this location was used as a religious site or dwelling prior to the construction of the temple complex. The temple complex is made out of two types of limestone. The harder, lower coralline limestone is used on the exterior walls, and the softer Globigerina limestone is used on the interior walls. It is widely believed that the construction of the Mnidra temple started with the East Temple, also known as the Upper Temple, between 3600 and 3200 BCE during the Gigantia period. It's a three-apsed building, looking most like a clover. The original pillar stones have been decorated with pit marks drilled into horizontal rows of the surface. They are still visible today. The small walls have been reconstructed over the years, but they do resemble the original stonework. One stone pillar inside this temple has numerous small dots in a couple of rows. In total, there are 179 dots. That is exactly as many as the days between the equinoxes. Some of these dots got linked to several known periods determined by the moon. For instance, there are 19 dots in the first row, which are linked with the 19 years of the Metonic Cycle. The Metonic Cycle is a period of approximately 19 years, after which the phases of the Moon recur on the same day of the year. The second row from the left has 13 dots, which stands for the 13 days from the full Moon until the next Old Moon. And the 16 dots from the right stand for the 16 days from the Old Moon when it's still visible until the full Moon. The 3 and 4 dots on the right make the 7 days of the Moon Quarter and the three dots on the left are for the three already completed moon quarters within the current month. The next row of 25 dots are for the 25 waning moons within a year. 11 for the additional 11 days that make up the tropical year in comparison to the 12 synodic months of 354 days. 24 plus 1 for the 24 waning moons within the 12 synodic month, plus 1 for an incomplete month until the end of the tropical year. And lastly, 53 dots on the bottom for the 53 weeks of a tropical year. Somewhere between 3150 BCE and 2500 BCE, in the Tarkshan period, construction began with the Southern Temple, also known as the Lower Temple. This is the most impressive temple of the complex, with its largely intact facade and benches which is astronomically aligned with the equinoxes of March 20th and September 22nd as the rays of the sun pass through the main doorway to illuminate the inner doorway. It's aligned with both the summer and winter solstices as well on June 21st and December 21st. At the summer solstice, the sun lights up the edge of a megalith to the left of the doorway, reaching the inner chamber. And at the winter solstice, the same effect can be seen on the corresponding megalith on the right-hand side. The temples are open to the public on the sunrise of the equinoxes and solstices to allow them to witness this impressive event. The corbelled walls indicate that the temple had been roofed in ancient times, and the stone slabs are decorated with intriguing spiral carvings and dotted patterns. As shown here, the porthole niche to the left is impressive to say the least, framed in a triliton and two tapered megaliths on either side. In the right-hand apse is a porthole doorway at the top of a flight of steps, giving access to an intramural chamber. An oracle hole opens from that chamber, and another oracle hole in a recess communicates with the back and outside of the temple. Within the first side chamber is an altar on a double hourglass-shaped pillar. The largest temple is the North Temple, which is also known as the Middle Temple. It was the last to be built as construction took place somewhere between 2500 and 2000 BCE. It was built between the other two temples and set on a higher elevation. It was unusual in having a 3 meter long porthole slab as its main entrance, with a second doorway behind it. Unfortunately, the porthole slab is now broken. To the left of the passage, leading into the inner apsis, is an engraving of a temple facade as shown here. The first excavations of the Menaidra temples were performed by J. Vons, 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find any additional information. In 1910, Dr. Thomas Ashby performed further excavations, which led to the current chronology of construction of the temples. In December of 1949, more excavations took place, in which two small statues, two large bowls, tools and one large spherical stone were discovered. The spherical stone was most likely used to move the larger stones in the construction of the temples. Although the Manaidra temples are quite well preserved, they were in danger of collapsing at the end of the 20th century. The stones were thinning and cracking due to water infiltration and salty atmosphere, which they hadn't been exposed to for a couple thousand years, as they were originally roofed and buried under soil until 1840. The complex was vandalized twice since receiving World Heritage status. The first time was in 1996 when it was sprayed with aerosol, and unfortunately again in 2001, on Good Friday, when three people armed with crowbars toppled and broke over 60 stones and inscribed graffiti on them. The attack was called the worst act of vandalism ever committed on the island of Malta by UNESCO. In response, the Maltese government hired guards, installed lighting and erected a protective fence around the archaeological park. The World Monetary Fund secured a grant for the repair of the temples at Manaidra. The stones were restored using new techniques, making it difficult to tell where the megaliths had been damaged and they now appear thankfully as they did before the vandalism took place. For conservation reasons, a removable canopy was constructed over the temples in 2009. This was done to protect the soft stones from erosion and the deterioration from the elements. Some visitors feel that the white canopies are an eyesore. They are, however, a necessary part of the conservation strategy for these temples, which are now exposed to a harsh coastal climate. The canopies were built without disturbing the site and they do not obstruct the sunlight during the astronomical alignments. The Manaidra Temple Complex was recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992, along with four other Maltese monuments. The visitor center of Manaidra and Hagarkim Archaeological Park is closed on 24, 25 and the 31st of December, the 1st of January and it's closed on Good Friday. I think you know why. All other days of the year it's open to the public. In the summer from 9am in the morning until 6pm in the afternoon and in the winter from 9am in the morning until 5pm in the afternoon. Before I end this video, I would like to say something that has been bothering me for a while now. Currently, the megalithic monuments in Ireland are being damaged, destroyed and vandalized. Especially in County Sligo, people are using metal detectors and stealing or moving stones from cairns. The Irish government has the duty of protecting their ancestral monuments. And change needs to happen fast before the cairns get destroyed and vandalized beyond repair. I implore the Irish citizens to demand that their government will do more to protect their monuments, so that generations from now are still able to walk among them in their full glory. I decided to make this video to show that preservation and protection can be done in the right way, using fences, guards, lighting and heavy penalties if needed. We need to protect these monuments from the thieves, the vandals and the idiots that are damaging them beyond repair. It is our duty to make sure that future generations are able to see these monuments with their own eyes instead of just pictures and videos in books or on the internet. With that said, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the link in the description down below or click the card in the upper right corner. And for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.